Hi there, this video will show you how to write a macro alternative to the Excel functions of Excel Lookup and VLOOKUP. As you can see, we have a table of revenue data by company in Sheet 1, from Alpha down to Zulu. In this example, we will randomly reference a handful of these companies in Sheet 2, which will be our output sheet. We will take Zulu, Tango, Alpha, X-Ray and Mike. Most financial modeling and Excel users are aware of VLOOKUP, and to a lesser extent the new edition Excel lookup in order to reference data like this example. Instead of using these Excel lookup functions, we will write a macro employing variant arrays which will execute more efficiently than applying index loops through the data set in Sheet 1. Go to Visual Basic for Applications and insert a module. Always endeavour to notate your macro as it can help out at a later date with auditing the macro if necessary. Let's call the macro macro lookup. Disable these Excel properties before running the macro, as it will improve the macro's performance. Now we need to declare the object variables for our lookup macro. In some instances, when writing a macro, not specifying object variables will not prevent a macro from running successfully. However, they are an imperative with this macro because we are referencing variant arrays across two sheets. Remember, when we write the below lines of code, it is vital to accurately reference and spell these object arrays precisely, otherwise the macro won't correctly execute. Given we are looking up data from Sheet 1 and referencing it into specific cells into Sheet 2, it is critical to set the object variables for these two worksheets. We will reference the index number of each sheet as it will safeguard our code even if a user changes the name of the worksheet.
Next, we need to locate the last row in our two columns by company name, the source column in column A of sheet one and the output column in column D of sheet two. Last row in is the object variable which will locate the last row in column A of sheet 1. Let's verify this by looking at sheet 1. We need to locate the last row based on the data in column A, the names of our companies from A2 to A27. Additionally, the last row out object variable will need to locate the last row in sheet 2, which will be based on the company names list in column D. There is an advantage to this approach to dynamically reference the last row of data. If we adjust our source data set in length in sheet one or want to reduce or expand the output list in sheet two of company names to look up, the macro will be able to facilitate this change with our data. Hence, last row out will be the object variable to remember the last row in column D for sheet two, our output sheet for this example. The first variant array to account for is the source range of company names in column A in sheet one. Note the syntax cells one one is the cell address A1. Whilst the syntax cells last row in two will be the cell address of the last row of data in column B or two. To reiterate this, here is the output sheet, sheet 2, and our input sheet, sheet 1. Next, we need to write the code for the find array variant. This variant array will record the output data in column D from sheet two. The syntax cells 1, 4 is the cell address D1. Cells last row out 4 will reference the last row of data in column D or 4.
The output array will ensure we return the correct revenue value from the source table in Sheet 1. The syntax cells 1.5 is the cell address E1. Whilst the syntax cells last row out 5 will denote the last row of data in column E or 5. We will now add a simple error handler to our macro. As narrated here, we must now write a loop to cycle through the output names in column D of sheet 2. Then a second loop to move through the input names from the source data in column A of sheet 1. With both loops, the loop will stop once we hit the last row of data in each respective data range. It is now time to type the look for variant array. Its value will be the value referenced in the find array variant. The find array vari variant will cycle through the individual names in column D of sheet 2. Whilst if the company name in array equals the company name found in look for, then our out array value must equal the revenue value in in array column B of sheet 1. Next J means we move down to the next company value in column A of sheet 1, our input sheet. Next I denotes we will move to the next company value in column D in sheet 2, our output sheet. Finally, this following code will ensure our lookup return will be the correct revenue number for our specific company name from column D in sheet 2.
Clearly, the output values need to be placed in column E of sheet 2 or by the column index number of 5. Our macro is essentially complete. We can re-enable the following Excel properties which were earlier disabled before we started writing the macro. Let's review our macro before we try it out. We will insert a form control button and place our macro here. Let's run the macro. We will verify the outputs. Our macro is working. We will now add a few more companies in column D of sheet 2, our output sheet. We will run our lookup macro once more, again it is working as required.